afternoon, class. Today we're going to talk about a new topic in math. But first, we're going to revisit the topic that we've been talking about for the past week, which are about fractions. Yes, about fractions. I want you to take out a piece of paper, tell me what is a fraction, then give me an example of a fraction. Now listen up to this part. After you give me those two, I want you to think about what you know about decimals, okay? I want you, if you ever heard of a decimal, if you might know the definition of a decimal, give me an example of one. If you never heard of the word decimal, that's fine. We're gonna learn about it today. So after today, you're gonna know what a decimal is. But it's fine, if you don't know, just write, I don't know, okay? I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes and then we're gonna go over it as a class. Okay, so does anybody wanna share their, their responses? With the class, Marquise, what is a fraction? Part of the whole. Good, yeah, that's exactly what a fraction is. It's part of a whole. It's not the whole. It's part of that whole. That's good. Give me an example. One half. Okay, one half. So we have one over two. So the numerator represents the what? The part. Yes, right. And then. The denominator represents the whole. So it's one of two parts. One part out of two. That's what that represents. Okay. So did you have anything about decimals? What's a decimal? The same as a fraction of part of a whole. Oh my goodness, that's correct. Yes. A decimal is a part of a whole as well. It's the same as a fraction. We just it's a different way of writing a fraction. So, if you know how to express something in a fraction form, you know how to express it in decimal notation. Can you say decimal notation? Decimal notation. Yes, that means that you're just expressing that fraction in decimal form, okay? Yes, yeah, so we have fractions means parts of a whole. Decimal means parts of a whole. It's the same thing, okay? So remember that. If you know about fractions, you already know about decimal. Okay, so did you have an example of a decimal, maybe? Okay, so Marquis said point three, which is good. That's excellent. Point three, that is a perfect example of a decimal. And you probably saw numbers like this, yeah. You probably saw them and you didn't know what it was, but that is decimal notation. So now, we're going to take this, that little point right there, it's called a decimal point. And what that does is separate the whole from the part. If we didn't have that decimal point right there, then the whole number would be a whole number. It wouldn't be any parts. We would think of it as a whole number. So it's really important to put that decimal point right there if you mean to express it as a fraction or parts of a whole. And the decimal point, any number to the left of that decimal point represents the whole numbers, the whole parts, you know, whole numbers. But then to the right of the decimal represents the parts of the whole, okay? And so Marquise, even though he said point three, which is which is right, but I want us to get into the habit of writing a zero right there. Because this is just not nothing over here to the to the left of that. It's not just nothing. It is a place value. And we put whole numbers there when we do have it. Now he used the example as 0 0.3, so we don't have it. But if we did, it would go right there. So just make sure you put 0 0.3, and that's how you read it, 0 0.3. Now, we talked about place values. We talked about place value when we talked about whole numbers. Place values of the whole numbers are what? Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, yes, and so forth and so forth. What decimal points have, or decimals have, place values as well. I'm going to take Marquise's. 0 0.3, and we're going to add some more numbers to it. So we're going to 0 0.3. Give me another number. 4. 4. Give me another number. 5. Okay, 5. So we got 0 0.345. That's what we have. Now, for the decimal, in the first, the first place to the right of the decimal point is called the tenth place. T-E-N-T-H-S. The second place to the right of the decimal is 
And the third place to the right of the decimal is called, you got it, the thousands place. And notice that I'm saying tenths, hundredths, thousands. I'm adding that THS on there because that makes a world of difference. Do not forget that because having a thousand dollars in my pocket is totally different than having a thousandths of a dollar in my pocket. Which one would you want? And yeah, I would want the thousand dollars too in my pocket. It's a big difference. So don't forget that. So now we have the tenths, the hundreds, and the thousands. Okay? I'm going to erase that. I'll put it over here so you can still remember it. So 0 0.345, that is the tenths place. Hundreds. And thousands. Okay, so you can just make reference to that. All right, so now we're going to try to do our own little decimal notation. So I'm going to write a big old block right here. I'm going to break it up into 10 parts. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I have 10 parts right here. In those parts, I'm going to put one tenth. Because that means that one of these parts is one out of ten. So one tenth in each of these blocks. One tenth. Okay. Now I'm going to shade in one of those blocks. One. So if I shade in one part of ten, how do I express that as a fraction? Marquis? One tenth. One tenth, which means one part out of ten. Okay? Yes. So, we just said that one part out of ten, tenths place. Go over there. That represents the tenths place. We just said that fractions is another way to write decimal notation. Decimal notation is another way to write a fraction. The only reason why we write stuff in decimal notation is because it makes it easier sometimes to calculate. It makes it easier to add numbers, subtract numbers, divide or multiply. And so sometimes we use decimal notation. Sometimes we use fraction. It really depends on which one would fit what we're doing, okay? All right, so we have one cent as a fraction. We represent that in, sign, uh, in decimal notation as 0 0.1. That one is in the tenths place. This is one tenths. So it makes sense, right? Right. Okay. So now, since it makes sense to you, I have this worksheet that Marquise is going to pass out to everybody. And I want you to do your own decimal notation. I want you to shade in as many or as little as you want on the strip. But I want you to express that in decimal notation. You can do it as in fractions as well. But if you do it in fractions, you have to also do it in decimal notation. I want to see decimal notation on here. I don't want you to just say, oh, Miss Payne, I just look, look, I just wrote fractions. No, we're talking about decimals now. So decimal notation, okay? I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. Okay, good. No one had any questions about that? Good. So now we're going to move on to something else. So we had tenths place, and then we also have hundreds place, remember? So, I know everybody remembers these. Remember this? How many of these little cubes are in this little, this whole little square? Hundreds, because it's a what? It's a hundreds block, yes. So, it's a hundred of these cubes in this little square. I'm not going to write that on there. It's going to take me forever in a day to write all these hundreds. So, I'm going to use this. I have shaded in 22 of these little bitty squares. It's 22 out of 100. 22 out of 100. So how do I write that as a fraction? 22 over 100. 22 over 100. The numerator represents the parts. It's 22 parts of 100, which is a whole. We just said that we can express fractions as decimal notations, correct? Yeah. So... The way that we express this as decimal notation, we have hundreds. Hundreds is the second place after the decimal to the right. So we have 0 0.2. The first two is a 
in the tenths place, right? And the second two is in the hundreds place. So that's 22 hundreds. That's 0 0.22. That's how you write that. Now, everybody's going to have their own little part of this. I'm going to have Marquise pass out your own little hundreds block. I want you to shade that as many as you want or as few as you want. And I want you to represent it in decimal notation. Yes, I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. Okay, good. Any questions? No? Good. Now I think you guys are ready for your decimal assignment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have an assignment. Yes, we do. Yes, and if you don't finish it, you take it home from homework. But Marquise is going to pass out this to everybody. Okay, so you're going to pass out this to everybody, and we're going to go around as a class. Part A, it says write the following fractions in decimal notation. That's what we just did. So you just take these fractions, make them in decimal notation. Just remember what we talked about. Part B, write the following decimals in fraction form. Hey, now flip-flop it. Flip-flop. So now you have to write the decimal notation as a fraction, which should be easy. We just did it up here. So just remember that, okay? And then I have a bonus. It says write two ten thousandths in decimal notation. Whoa, that's a big number. I know. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't freak out because you can do this. You have the place value right here. You have that. So you can do it and just try it. If you get it wrong, that's fine because it's not going to count against you. If you get it right, that's great. You get bonus points. So it's to your best benefit to just try it. And then part C is on the attached paper, write a story or draw a picture that uses decimals in real life settings. What I mean by that, remember when we were talking about fractions, we were talking about the pizza, and we have 10 pieces of pizza, and I take two pieces of that. What's the fraction? Two tenths, yes. That's what I want. I want you to use something that you do in real life. It could be a pizza, it can be fruit, it could be vegetables, it could be toys, I don't care. Write a story about it. If you choose to write a story about it, it must be five sentences long, must use proper spelling and grammar. Five sentences are not, is not that long. So use proper spelling and grammar, and then use the decimals to describe items in the story. It must be accurate and logical. You know, you can't just be throwing decimals anywhere. It has to be logical. If you're drawing a picture, it must be creative, must be neat and understandable, and it must it's, the explanation of the picture must be in decimal notation. Let's just say I drew a picture of a pizza, and I drew me taking two pieces of the pizza. Okay, you have to back that up with two tenths or 0 0.2. That's how you're supposed to back that up, okay? You got it? If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me, okay? All righty. Bye. Okay, that's the end of my lesson plan, but I just want to tell you guys that all of the things that I showed you, all of the worksheets and a copy of my lesson plan, um, is in the discussion board, okay? So all you got to do is click on the link if you want to see exactly what I gave them and if you want to print it out and everything. So I hope you enjoy. See you guys. Well, I guess I see you at the discussion board. Bye.